All right, friends, we're in the back of DeMille's third generation Prius, and I'm about to teach him one heck of a lesson. Basic tools we're using, a 10 millimeter socket with extender, a nice plastic pry tool, and later you'll see me bring in a shop vac, a bottle brush, and a uh, maybe some Cuervo gold. But how'd we get to this juncture? Well, DeMille left his Prius V here while he's out delivering fertilizer for hell. He's been worried about the hybrid warning lights on his dash, but too chicken to try the simple fix of cleaning out the hybrid fan. He insists it's an all-day job, but I know darn well it ain't. Not with this version of the Prius. So I figured, what do I got to lose? And I bet him my fully loaded Tacoma against his Prius that I could get it done before it gets back. So here we go. I'm going to peel open this glorified toaster and show you how easy it is to steal a Prius from a hipster kid. But first, I want to tell you that Merv merch is just flying off the shelves at our Teespring store. Timely designs, shirts, mugs, clever wearables, and now specially marked down prices for our loyal legion of followers. There's a link in the description down below to help get you to the store. All right, Junior, get good shots. I'm going to teach our friend a valuable lesson. I've been telling you that the mill kid's nothing but trouble. Open this up. Pop this out. Yank on this. Stroke this out of the way. And here you got what appears to be a 12 volt battery. Juice maker cranks over the engine just like a regular car. Here's the uh, hybrid high voltage battery. Look, orange means danger, death. Don't you monkey with this. This is not for mortals. And you see you got a vent here to keep her cool. All right, let's go around to the rear door. And remember, I'm not telling you to do any of this, but if you've been watching a lot of videos about how to access battery pack through a regular Prius, a lot of them talk about taking out the back seat, but you don't have to do that with the Prius V. And you see here, I'm gonna just slide this seat forward and put this down. You see back here, you got a cover that's covering over your hybrid battery. And you're going to notice there's one lonely, vulnerable 10 millimeter bolt just waiting to come out. Because once I remove that, it's going to allow us to take off this here cover. And you're going to see here in a minute, it's got three clips on this side and three clips on the other side that clip it to this here plastic housing that goes over the wheel wells, which is another thing that makes it different from the regular Prius, because that regular Prius has like five or six clips that go right down through the center, the, down into the hybrid battery area there to hold it in place. And, but this here, it just, I mean, it's the V for victory. 10 millimeter socket coming into action. Yeah, I just loosen it till I get to the point where I can spin it out by hand. It ain't, it ain't real tight. But be sure you take that and put it in a safe place. So this just pops up out of here. You gotta muscle it a little bit. And there you see the most dangerous thing in the universe exposed for all the world. High voltage hybrid battery. This to mortals is like, you know, kryptonite to me. So steer clear. I'm just showing you what I do. And even though this video is for entertainment purposes only, I hope you know that if you're crazy enough to do serious work on your hybrid battery, this little orange doohickey can reduce the risk of injury or death. Ain't that a nice feature? See, I can just grab my handle, swing it out, and she cuts down the voltage like a circuit breaker. This is the area here we're going to be focusing on. That's the fan, the cooling fan, all right? So you got the duct and the vent coming out of it. The fan leads to another duct, what goes under your back seat, and then it comes out under the seat there. And Different design than the Prius. I've seen a feller... <clears throat> service in a battery fan in a standard Prius for, for lesser men, but his actually, you know, he actually had to take this whole thing off to get at it because we ain't going to do that. Uh, at least I ain't going to do it. Keep in mind, this is the way I do things. I ain't telling you to do this. Do plenty of research, all right?
I'm going to pry this push pin out of the way so we can just remove this here vent that uh, come out the side of the uh, housing for the high voltage battery. I noticed something when I'm looking at this. It's uh, really kind of smashed down. You know, I mean, DeMille does carry around a lot of, you know, like heavy, fancy video equipment and such. And I wonder maybe that could have smashed this down and deformed it in some way. I would say, you know, whether it's just for heat and the thing sort of just becomes misshapen over time, you know, like Helen, I'm going to try to straighten it out a little bit and make it a little bit better before I put it back into place. It might not make that big of a difference, but, you know, we are talking about science, so every little bit helps when you're dissipating heat. All right, you got your 12-volt uh, starter battery there. That's what cranks the engine, just like in any car. And over here, you got... Uh, what we've exposed is a uh, hybrid battery with all of its modules and internal cells. And it's a whole other discussion we're probably going to have in another video, which I just delivered a shameless plug for. But you got some disconnect opportunities here. Let's focus on this area. This is the fan. With all assortments of uh, multi-pin connectors, which ain't really that easy to take apart. It's a little bit of a... Pickle, but if I uh, pry out this push fastener and this here one, it's going to give me a little slack. It's going to be freer to come out now. And then without uh, forcing anything, you can just uh, push in. You just, you just want to just don't, nice and easy. Don't, don't ever muscle it. These are fragile. You want to be... Oh, <sighs> Push that. <clears throat> just get a good grip on that. And you gotta just push in that side just ever so gently. <clears throat> just. <sighs> and it's just gonna come sliding right apart. Which brings us to Merv Serve tip number 17. See, car manufacturers would never want to design any three clips the same way. Here you have side by side an example of their bullshit. Rumor has it, these three clips can bring a grown man to tears. And I'm going to call these clip number one, clip number two, and clip number three. I start by doing my number one. I push from back here while I push down on the release in here. And that comes right out. Now, with more room for my fingers, I do my number two which of course just has to be different. With this one, I'll provide a pull in this area, but the release is on the side here. I get my grippy gloves on this connector, never the wires, and push this side release, and she comes right out. Finally, this one, a totally different alternative. I put my pick in here and push at the same time with my pick, and she slips right out. Stage right, 10 millimeter. I just get in there with my extension and just loosen that up. And, you know, sometimes because I am such a rugged macho legend, I just reach in there and just twirl it by hand like this. And Because once it's loosened up, you can do that. And, and sometimes you got to get your fingers into the action. Because I don't want to drop this, and the last thing I need is to lose this bet because I wasted time hunting for a missing part. And she's out. Put her down there ever so gingerly. And coming back through the rear passenger door, you're going to see once again that you got a bolt down in there. And this duct is in the way of getting at those 10 millimeter bolts down there. And I'm probably going to catch hell in the comments section for showing you what I'm about to do. But what you got to realize is that this duct only overlaps the neck of the fan by maybe a quarter inch or so. And it's sturdy, tough plastic. It's, I, I mean, some sort of space age, Prius unique polymer. But it doesn't take much of a tug to uh, get her out of there. And now the two parts are now separate. And what was in the way ain't going to be a problem no more. So we're going to get down in here on the left side and get that 10 millimeter out of there. And then do the rest by hand here in a minute. And then... Uh, same thing over here, now that it's accessible. Finish it up by hand so I can 
pull that up and not drop it. Yeah, th this one, this one was a surprise though. It's uh, just a nut with a stud bolt coming up through it. It's going to make it difficult to shimmy this out of here. God bless Toyota. Mm -hmm. I know what they're doing. And make it hard on you. And you got a similar situation here. You got a clip that needs to come out so that we can free this up. And once you get up, once you get up under here, it just kind of yeah, pops out in there. Now, this little bugger is free from all wiring attachments. And we're going to get this down out of the way so the uh, fan don't get hung up on it. And I'm going to try to yank her and lift this up off of that one stud. And yeah, bend this back a little bit. You can take it off if you're not quite as manly as me. But the fan is out. And looking here, let's see how dirty she is. She's got some dirt in there. It's you know, nothing, nothing crazy. So we got to clean up this sensitive piece of electronic equipment. And, uh, you know, maybe we could use this. Uh, no, no. Something stronger like this. No, wait a minute. I know. This. Air. Simple dusting air. Dirtier than a man would ever realize. All right, so I took her inside, and, and I did start tearing her apart. Took the screws out there with the intention that this puppy was going to come apart by way of these here clips here. And the general pitfall here is I realized I was heading down a slippery slope thinking I was going to take it apart and separate this so I could get in there and clean it real good. But then I realized I got to order, need to order myself probably like a whole new kind of little foam gasket that goes around here, this seal that goes around here because it's just going to get mucked up. It's gonna, just going to get ruined when that thing splits in half. It's going to cause that foam seal to come off and get damaged. I just couldn't see any reason to do that. It seems to me a person could reach down in there and clean her up real good with any dry, electrically safe method like a rag on the end of the spoon. Or I am going to point out that I had a couple of these, a, a, a bottle brush, what Helen uses on the Formula bottles that she gives to Merv Buner still loves it. I mean, of course, he's been off breastfeeding since he's like 26 or 27, but loves his bottle. And these curve right down in there, right around, and, you know, kind of in that duct that goes around the, you know, that plastic housing. That, uh, they curve down in there. And, you know, fellas, what you got to remember when you're using these is take, at first, you know, long, smooth strokes in and out and, It'll clean up real good. Just take your time and hang in there as long as you can. You'll eventually get her all worked out. Now look in there, look inside there. Look what a nice job that's doing. I'm still gonna get a toothbrush to get on the fins of that fan, but the duct itself is clean as a whistle right now. And I do know just by serendipitous happenstance that there's a wonderful toothbrush on Helen's bedside table. And it's calling my name right now. All right, get down in there, just nice and easy along the edge of the fins. And finally, by using a variety of various devices and ingenuity, I was able to get this fan looking pretty darn clean, ready to go back in. And then while I was at it, I took my bottle brush and got down in here real good and sucked it out with a shop vac you know, from both ends. Mm -hmm. To put it back together, I just reverse the process. She's gonna go right back in there. I get that forked mounted in place, tighten everything down, reinstall this plastic push pin, higher and harness pops back into the hole. Oh, I'm tasting victory. This car is gonna be mine soon. Multi pin connector snaps back in place and down into the hole. I stretched out the misshapen vent, reinstalled her. And finally, with the clips lined up on the battery cover, she pops right back in. He's in the driveway. Ooh, that's what I call perfect timing. We have 100% project completion, and this car is about to be mine. This is Murph, and I'll see you next time. Oh, I can't wait to break the news to the mill. Hey, I, I think you forgot something. Hey, Paul? 
you might want to hold off on that conversation. Merv Service Secrets is an ongoing DIY adventure. Be sure to subscribe and turn on your notifications to get updates on every chapter in our story. Because there's always a secret just waiting to bust out.